Matthew Holt, got three big ones today. Tiger is back, General Catalyst, and E-Patient Dave. It's the April 12th episode of Health Tech Deals. Okay, so this begs the question, so you don't have to put it in the two minutes, but how long have you known ePatient Dave as a result of Health 2.0? Well, I must admit, I didn't know ePatient Dave was a major venture capitalist like Tiger and General Catalyst, but uh, maybe he is. So <laughs> ePatient Dave, famous for being the guy who was uh, one of the very first sort of aggressive ePatients, one of the founders of the Society for Participatory Medicine, which I'm on the board of. Him and Danny Sands got together. They used to not only uh, talk about the fact that Danny, you know, worked with him as he was a, one of the first aggressive pay, out there patients, did a lot of speaking in the late 2000s and early 2010 about this stuff. Uh, they also sang together. He's in like Dang. a barbershop quartet and Danny sings. Whoa, well. whoa, whoa. I have whoa, seen them whoa. singing about their experience of participatory medicine at conferences. It's quite frightening. And then later on, he got involved in... What? Is there YouTube footage of this? Somewhere. Well, it can be done. There's definitely footage of them singing. Uh, he was the guy who said, give me my damn data. He's in a, like, yeah. there's a, there's a rock video of, uh, a bunch of guys. I can't remember who they all ran that one. Uh, someone, there was a, someone had a band. Um, uh, he's really early. Really you know, so. <laughs> give me my damn data, which he, he raps and stuff. Anyway, all that stuff. But yeah, but, uh, he patient Dave, yeah. And now he is on the board of, or is he, no, now he's working for a kind of patient representative for a company that lost some money. So. All right, well, let's get to that deal. Well, let's get to it. I mean, okay. Things were wild back at the beginning of this. <laughs> when you, before you got there, when you were like hanging out and like- I came, I came in during the, when the rock era of the health IT, health tech investing came and transitioned into the Z-Dog MD era. That was when I came on the scene. So like I grew, I, I, I came up with the Z-Dog crowd. <laughs> when you were hiding in the innovation cube of Blues or Florida. And people who like to sing songs about health IT issues. <laughs> I came out in the Z-Dog era. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start that timer. Let's go. go. All right, Tiger's big deal. This AI, $100 million. Tiger Insight Partners, both in this, brings your total up to $256, $1.2 billion valuation. What do they do, Matthew? Hold the Tiger is back. It's licked its wounds and it's had a lot of wounds given the amount of money it spent out last year on, on uh, digital private and public digital health companies. Uh, this is very interesting. It's got some uh, F FDA validation. It's got, uh, was doing basically automated reading of images to get strokes and it's expanding that now to aortic disease, pulmonary embolism, aneurysms, a bunch of other stuff, right? And it's got a bunch of other uh, 510Ks uh, pending. It's claiming a hundred, sorry, a thousand hospitals worldwide are using its stuff and hundred employees. So it's kind of like getting to be AI into the, into the radiology department. All right, that e-patient Dave deal, Pocket Health, they get 16 million, brings their total up to 22. Yeah, this is a Toronto-based company. He is the sort of patient representative type. It's about image sharing, getting your images out of data. They're not normally in my chart, getting them into the personal health record, sort of replacing handing out those CDs, or in some cases, handing out the actual film that people walk around with. Uh, cool idea, cool company. I hope it works. Substance use startup, Eleanor Health, they get 50 million general catalysts and a bunch of others in this one, brings your total up to 82. Yeah, interesting leader in this area, uh, two female leaders, Corbin Petro and Nzinga Harrison. Uh, they basically are selling substance abuse disorder, yeah, substance use disorder tools, services, and outsourcing stuff, primarily the health plans. They've got Tufts, Samara Group, Optum, and Aetna on board. Uh, interesting company, that space is taking shape. I know a couple others in that, um, cool space. All right, Recora Health, they get 20 million. This is like just above their seed round. It's a series A, Signal Fire, Valor Equity, and some others in that one. Some kind of cardiac recovery program with, you know, and they have Skysinger and some regional insurers on board. I have no idea what these different cardiac programs are. Good, okay. This one you described to me as a mini ah, ALD ah, that's vitalized ah, health, they get 50 million, brings their total up to 70. All right, I don't know why they, yeah. So it is a, a mini, uh, it's a mini ALD. I still can't pronounce Al Aldade, Al Aldade. 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 What was Aldade. it? They told you. Whatever. They told you. Okay. All right. All right. So their idea here. Is, so I think this is sort of indicative of a bit of a trend. Whether they're too late, who knows? There were a bunch of VCs in this I've never heard of. But um, what they basically did is they were themselves a Medicare, uh, a Medicare focused primary care clinic. And they built onto it like kind of some risk bearing tools, 
some virtual clinic stuff, some in-home stuff, you know, on a tech platform. Now they're selling it to others. They've sold it to allegedly 280 other practices with about 130,000 patients on it. Oh. Which is, you know, getting, it's not quite LA, but it's getting there. Um, whether they're, you know, exactly how much, much they're doing, I don't know. But if you think about Medicaid, managed Medicaid and managed Medicare, you know, there are a lot of people who need help still who are not necessarily in a big medical group, um, like a, like a Iora or like an Oak Street. So, you know, that's, that's where they're headed. Interesting. There may be room for that. There's a lot of people dancing around the kind of, how do we help physicians manage that? And there are obviously people like, as you know, there are other people who are saying, can we just become the physicians managing a medical advantage? And while you've been out having fun, there's been a lot of fun and games on the healthcare blog with George Halverson talking about medical advantage and a lot more that that space is getting both hotter and hotter sort of financially and much more controversial politically. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but there's something in that, in that game. Exciting times. It is exciting. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, I mean, it, it's one of the, it, it is, we've talked on and off about this on TCB game, but you know, there's a lot of argument back and forth about whether Medicare advantage, you know, it's now nearly 50% of all Medicare. And it used to be this weird little offshoot. And now there's questions about whether it's now going to take over Medicare. And if so, what's it going to look like? And how are providers going to handle it? And, you know, something like a vitalized health, health might help. So. I was talking to uh, Jeff Ruby, the founder and CEO of Newtopia earlier today, and he just came out of Health Evolution Summit. He said that there was so much talk about value-based models, particularly in that Medicare Advantage model Absolutely. at that summit that he was he was blown away. He's like, I actually feel like this is really a deal now. Well, I think in order to get a health evolution summit, we should be charging you more money for whatever you're sponsoring us. Sponsoring us. <laughs> I mean, I, I, health evolution was run by my friend, Julie Murchison for years and years, and she would never let me go. Normally, you can I can't off. imagine why. <laughs> Normally, you swap off tickets, and I would make, and she would come to health too. I would make her pay because she wouldn't let me go to health. I'd me. make her pay. <laughs> I'd make her a colleague. Pay. I would, and then I'd make normally, her I would swap a ticket. They wouldn't let me go because it's like so she she and exclusive. But there was a, there was a good photo of like six or seven female CEOs: Christina Saffron, um, uh, Je is it Jenny from Calibrate, and uh, Heather, uh, Heather from Isabel Sorry. Canyon from Calibrate. Yeah. And yeah. Isabel, sorry, Isabel from Calibrate, a bunch of, bunch of others all together. And I, my, 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 my note on Twitter was, well, I'm, I'm glad to see this and I hope you've driven all the men away because we know they're no good. Ooh. Well, if you don't, people, if you don't invite him to your conference, he will just weigh in on it from afar on Twitter. <laughs> and to see that happen, head on over to Twitter and follow him at Bolty Boy. I am at Jess Damasa. And to never miss an episode of Health Tech Deals or any of the other great content from the healthcare blog, including those articles about Medicare Advantage and other things, and THCB Gang, which airs on Thursdays live at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Sign up for our email newsletter over there at thehealthcareblog.com. Which is coming out probably in your inbox around the time you see this. Oh, sure, sure it is. I'll just keep waiting Promise. for that. Promise. It's one of the way. <laughs> All, All right, right, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.